Perfect. Let's move on to question number 81. All right, the correct answer is D. Now, these uh, other ones, you have to be careful. They are a bit confusing. So, for example, three days after the predecessor task is scheduled to start, well, that's that's a lag, and it could be a lag if you are in a very different kind of relationship where it is finish to, uh, sorry, start to start. But we, they've already told us the kind of relationship we are talking about is finish to start, that some activity should have finished before the next uh, you know, the successor activity could start. So this is an example of a lag. There's no doubt about it, but it's for start to start kind of an activity. And therefore, this is not the right answer because of this relationship. For this, the correct, the, the correct explanation is three days after the predecessor task is scheduled to finish. So there'll be a gap between the finishing of the predecessor task and the start of the successor task. And that gap would be exactly three days because that's exactly what is called lag. Right? Remember, lag can be applied for all kinds of relationship, but they have clarified that we are trying to talk about only finish to start, and therefore this is the correct answer. All right, let's move on to question number 82. And the correct answer is negotiations, right? So you need to understand is that you cannot just obtain resources very easily from your, you know, the functional managers, the resource managers. You have to use negotiations. Pre-assignment simply means that you put the names of the people in the project charter itself. So this is not the answer, right? So what is what is it that we are trying to say? To acquire the project team from functional managers, the best technique to use, right? Why would functional managers give you? Uh, resources. They would be more interested in getting them to do uh, operational work. That's their KPI. So you have to negotiate. They have to, You have to get into a win-win situation for them, right? Okay, if you give me so many people, you'll also get uh, certain billing done, right, for, for those resources. So those kind of things. You have to have a win-win situation. Uh, virtual teams, well, virtual teams means, uh, you know, team members not working together in a co-located situation, right? So that is not a <laughs> that is not the technique for obtaining resources. That is one of the techniques of getting work done through a distributed team. And acquisition, well, acquisition is a process. It's not a technique, right? So acquiring resources is a process. So here's the thing that you need to know. And the other way to look at it is that uh, one of the tools and techniques of the process called acquire team or acquire resources is negotiation. Of course, virtual team and pre-assignment is also a tool and technique, but these are for different things. And therefore, negotiation is the one that is needed to negotiate with resource managers, functional managers, and other people to get hold of the kind of resources that you wanted and in the time that you wanted and in the quantity that you wanted. All right. In case you're looking for a course, an examination readiness course, which is going to get you ready in just under 16 hours to ACE PMP exam. Does a course like that exist? Yes, it does. Well, all you have to do is type pmvideo.pm-pulse.com. That's my site for PM videos. And over here, you have a few PMP 2021 related videos. The very first one is PMP Dash. PMP Dash for acing PMP 2021. When you come to this particular landing page, you have a video which will give you an introduction to entire PMP Dash. It also contains certain things which are there in PMP Dash. There will be samples of what's contained inside. You can make an informed decision. The best thing is, it gets you ready in just 16 hours. It contains every aspect of what's going to be covered in the PMP exam. Not only that, it has also 180 questions, full examination set guided by me. In case you're looking for a course, which will get you ready for PMP exam in a very short period of time. And not only that, it'll help you ace it. Well, this is the course.
Okay, let's continue on to question number 83. And the correct answer for this is laissez-faire. This is basically a French uh, term, which means let people be. But in most cases, this actually results into chaos. I'll be very honest. In fact, there's a PMP question which says, hey, which one of these leadership skills actually generally results into chaos? And the answer is laissez-faire. Uh, I mean, uh, it, it's it's quite it's not that easy, right? It's it's very difficult. You have to have the most matured people working in your company, most mature, right? I'm talking about globally most mature. Otherwise, this doesn't work. It's typical French way of saying, "Hey, let people be," and that's well. I should not get into what happens to projects over there. It's uh, Germany and France is one of those countries where the projects get delayed the most. Yeah, you'll be surprised. Germany, yes. As I said, most of the com companies and countries famous for um, quality are not good in project management, including uh, uh, Japan. They are known for operations. Germany is known for operations, but projects, all three of these companies are very, quite bad. So I'm sorry, this is not racist, but this is a fact. <laughs> it's a statistical fact. I've written blogs on them. All right. So anyway, coming back to the point, uh, uh, the explanation given here is just let people take their own decision and all those kind of things. Well, that's all laissez-faire, right? All right. Let's move on to question number 84. And the correct answer is, I'm sure you got it right, and that is alpha A, call a meeting. I think you're getting a whole hang. The way I'm explaining all the questions, I think you should be getting a hang of it right now. That's the whole idea of me doing these guided questions. You get a hang of how to answer certain questions. And whenever you have these kind of situations where somebody's complaining something or they're not happy with a you know, particular plan or something is not working very well, somebody is not doing a great job or somebody is complaining that you are not doing a good job. So if the first thing you need to do is talk to the person and understand the why and the hows, right? And once you understand that, then you can figure out, okay, then what do I need to do? Do not jump to conclusions which are given in the rest of the options. Pretty good. All right, let's move on to question number 85. And the correct answers are formal, expert, reward, referent, and punishment, right? So these are known as some of the powers of a project manager. So when you talk about powers, powers for who? Powers for project managers. Now, there is something known as legitimate, uh, expert, reward, but there's nothing known as economic and bargaining. Legitimate simply means, and sometimes, now there's a debate among uh, various schools of management which think that legitimate is not part of your uh, uh, project manager's power. So I'm going to leave it at that, right? But I'm, I'm, I'm going to simply say that legitimate is okay. It's one of the powers that a project manager has, but economic and bargaining just don't exist, right? Similarly, when we talk about these ones, there is nothing known as political and punishment. You have punishment, sorry, my mistake. You have something known as a coercive power, but you don't have a political power, right? So then uh, uh, you have A, which is legitimate, expert, reward, political, again, same issue, and bargaining. So you have a mix and match, and there is one or two uh, which are incorrect in each of these other lines. 
except for this, it is the formal expert reward referent and punishment. Punishment is basically coercive.